Hi guys, Josh here. Welcome to Frames Per Second. Today we're here with Sir. We're doing a photo shoot around random spots in Brisbane. You're gonna be surprised. We even went to a supermarket. But anyway, hope you enjoy the video. We're shooting heaps of film. Let's go. So it's been a while since it's shot Superior 800 meters and it is one of my favorite films and I do still have quite a few roles saved up because it was discontinued two years ago now I think and it's a great film it's a film I love quite a lot and I'm not usually a fan of Superior 400 but for some reason the 800 just hits with me and could potentially be the type of scenes I shoot with it because I do tend to shoot with it at night and like it just has less of like that redness that usually comes with the 400 but that could just be the conditions I shoot it Actually, but yeah, yeah it's a great that, film very accurate colors even more accurate than the GoPro white balance at times and so here we are with Sir who was fantastic to shoot with we got some really cool stuff and yeah we're just shooting at these neon lights which is really just a small part of this one building because unfortunately in Brisbane Australia there aren't a lot of neon lights. There used to be a bit more three years ago, like if you saw my Natura vs Superior 1600 video, there was more neon lights which aren't around anymore, unfortunately. And so this is one of the few spots where you can actually kind of shoot that isn't on a roof. And I think we got some cool shots. And yeah, Superior 800 I do like quite a bit. I think I might have been metering at... 400 for some of these but definitely 800 for other ones and yeah it's it's a film that unfortunately was discontinued though technically it is still in the waterproof disposables that yeah. Fuji sell which have 800 ISO film it, it's the same one basically yeah. and there is a slight difference between the Venus and the extra version the Venus just has more saturation and contrast which it says on the, on the data sheets while the data sheets of the extra version it's it's a little bit different but there are some people who think that it's exact same but i've shot with both and i've got different results so i like to think that it's different and yeah here you can see i was able to bring a bit more detail out of the shadows and yeah i thought it was just a really good one to do neon lights with because of the different colors and just the accuracy of the colors because that's the thing fuji tends to have more accurate coloring than kodak because kodak leans more towards warmth and skin tones and a lot of the kodak range is aiming to get that good quality human skin while the fuji is trying to get accurate colors and you do get quite nice greens and reds from fuji that you just can't get the same from a lot of kodak stocks especially at high speeds and this is coming from me and i love Portrait 800, which is my favorite high speed film. But yeah, just for certain things like this, I find the uh, Superior 800 Venus is perfect for. And this is the last shot of this location, but it has real Blade Runner vibes for me. And I really like it for that. I just wish there was more neon lights around here so that I wasn't so confined to this one small little area. And then, so I wanted to shoot. At a grocery store so this is one that's called coco's and they got quite a variety of things from different countries as well and so yeah we're just shooting at this grocery store we got a few interesting shots and it was kind of like yeah. there's a security guard there and so there was kind of like taking photos when they weren't walking around us <laughs> and so we did have to be a little bit sneaky and i do like this shot maybe i should have done something with her reaching towards herself and maybe that could have been more interesting, but yeah, you can see that the Super 800, particularly with the fluorescent lights, it is wonderfully balanced, and you don't get that weird kind of greenness to it that you do with, like, say, Kodak and other films, and that's because Fuji was kind of designed to kind of handle those fluorescent lights a bit better. And with all the colors of the vegetables, it's nice and accurate as well. Now here, I was definitely metering at 400 just to get that shadow detail out a little bit more particularly because Sir uh, is wearing all black a little bit up. Yeah, that's good. and while not every shot is a banger it was kind of fun and there was kind of something kind of fun about just the whole sneaking around trying to get photos yeah. unfortunately this one is out of focus which was definitely on me but yeah it's just a bit different 
and yeah it was just something that I hadn't really done before so it, it, particularly with like not asking for permission um, which I don't always recommend but sometimes you just gotta do it because we're not doing anything particularly bad and if we, when we found this little yeah, corner that we did a few shots in and I thought the blue was just kind of interesting and yeah like yeah I'm always amazed by how great Fuji is with fluorescent lighting it just it just looks nice and natural and doesn't look ugly which it can sometimes and sometimes you do want that vibe like shooting fluorescent lights with Cinestill or even like Portra it gives you that kind of like off color which can definitely be a mood but I'm always surprised by just how accurate and nicely balanced Fuji films are sometimes and it's a shame that this film is discontinued because it was one of my favorites and if you want to see another shoot I did with it I shot with it back in Japan and so there's a shoot I did back then with Claire and you can go and check that out I'll put a card up above but yeah, that lastly we stopped by Goma, which you would have seen this location last week with the 250D in the text pan. And it, I've been meaning to do a photo shoot around here too because this wall of the building is basically just light panels that change colors constantly. So I've always thought that it'd be cool to do something around here, so we did. And yeah, I just love color in general. I'm a big fan of color. I definitely shoot it more than black and white. And I just want to see how Fuji would do with this. And as you can see, it's actually a bit more accurate than the white balance that's coming from the GoPro. And so how it actually did look like isn't what you're seeing from the footage, but what you're seeing from the photos. And it is slightly different. And yeah, for an 800 speed film, it's not terribly grainy, like I've definitely seen grainier film around, but I do find that portrait does have a little bit less grain if that's what you're wanting, but for me, as long as you meter it right and expose it well, the grain's not that big of an issue. Sometimes it looks really nice and clean, and other times it does look a little bit grainy, and you can always manipulate that to what you want for your sh yeah. shoot. And you can always manipulate that depending on what you want from your shoot. Yeah, let's go for and here it we maybe were just a bit too silhouette-y because particularly with the blue and green colors you get a little bit less detail coming around but I thought this one was definitely quite nice and yeah this this was just a very versatile area you have these light panels but then there's also this garden with these white flowers which took on the color of the light so we do fun things with that and yeah as you can see the color changed again yeah. here and yeah it was kind of just a really handy location having the color changing like here you could see it's changing to be more red and yeah so if you live around Brisbane it's a good place to shoot I don't see a lot of people shooting around it so you won't be too cliche if you do but yeah I just thought it would be fun to kind of shoot at night again because I haven't in quite a while and that's Fuji Superior and yeah. Venus is just a very versatile stock that gives you really good color rendition as well and I just a saturation that, that I do like because I do like more saturation than the pasta look Jump and here we just kind of thought we'd get some movement I was on like a 60th or a 30th of a shutter so yeah. there's quite a bit of motion blur Three, two, but one. at the end of the day I thought these shots turned out quite well so Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed the photos, please let us know, so you know your favourites in the comments below. Let's thank Sarah for being our amazing model. And yeah, please like and subscribe, turn the post notifications to know when there's a new episode. Anyway, I'm Josh, Sarah, frames per second, just get out there, shoot some film.